How's it going, everyone? Welcome to the week four roundup for the elite battling. I'm gonna acknowledge it right away because you guys probably saw the thumbnail and or in uh uh the thing. I don't know. Uh Timmy's not here. We're joined by Belly again, as per usual. If you guys remember last season when Landon missed like two in a row or three, I don't remember. Um, Belly, she she was with us this whole time. So Belly's here. Everybody say hi, Belly, in the comments, of course. Um, but we are doing, uh, we are going over week four, which was pretty intense. Uh, a lot of intense matchups, and it 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 set up quite a few quite a few uh intense playoff scenarios um which means week five is going to be intense i'm just gonna keep saying it because it is this is coming down to the wire it could be like completely uh not dramatic at all because there are a couple scenarios where it just like a lot of the, uh, the other complicated scenarios don't really matter uh but yeah, but before we get into all that, you guys absolutely need to go check out all the coaches in the description. Week five, like I said, is shaping up to be one of the best weeks so far this season. So you definitely want to go check out all the coaches. You don't want to miss out on week five. It comes out on Saturday, 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 Saturday. Go check it out um, and go check out all the coaches and, you know, make sure you guys are up to date with all that good stuff. Uh, my my name is Lonely Hermit. I don't know. I, I don't know why I don't introduce myself right away. I'm your host, Lonely Hermit. Like I said, normally I'm joined by It's Really Timmy B, but today we're joined by Belly. His links are still down below, by the way, of course. Uh, Timmy's links, of course. They're still down there. Go check them out. Um, and my links are down there as well. Now, there are some playoff scenario corrections we do have to make, but we'll do that when we go over the rankings when I'm done going over all the matches. Um, so, yeah, let's get right into it. We have the LA Inferno versus the Kentucky Kinglers, a match that ended in another stalemate for the LA Inferno. It was 3-3, and they, they walked away with another win based off HP. I was honestly very surprised when I saw it pop up. I did not really think I walked away with the HP win on that one. I thought Derek definitely won it. But then again, some of the Pokemon he had left, uh, Mimikyu, Cinderace, are not really known for having a lot of health. So I'm not too, too surprised. Um, now, at, in the moment, I definitely was. Because looking at my Pokemon, too, I mean, Rotom Heat, Tyranitar and Mamoswine, to be fair, Tyranitar and Mamoswine didn't actually come onto the field, so they were full health. So that, that probably helped a lot because Rotom Heat was like like one hit away from dying. Um, so this match was very intense, very much a stall fest. Quarver Knight coming in clutch uh, last week, unfortunately, like you guys saw, he got completely neutralized because of uh, my dumb decision to keep body press. This time we brought Joe Peck, <laughs> this time we brought Joe Peck, um, and we were able to set up the substitute, bulk up, and all that good stuff, and it just tanked and tanked and tanked and tanked and roosted and roosted and and roosted and roosted and roosted uh and then tanked and and then it died eventually after like 15 minutes <laughs> eventually it went down uh, but it i i, I should have honestly checked because that would have been an interesting fact but i feel like it was honestly on the field for like a solid 10 minutes and i I'm, I might not even be exaggerating. I might be underplaying it. Like it was on the field for like half the match. Not even kidding. I think Derek can definitely attest to that. You guys, you guys could go watch the video to see for yourselves. I think it was on the field for like a solid 10 minutes or something like that. It is crazy how how it, how long it just lasted. And the only reason is it went down is because honestly, I let it. I could have roosted like for two. I think Roost still had like two or three more PP. I could have let it uh, stay up a little bit longer. But the burn from Primarina Scald onto Corviknight was huge. Um, but the thing is, when that happened, I was just kind of lost. I, I My game plan went completely out the window earlier in the match when Rotom Heat took a big hit. Um, my my plan went completely out the window. Um, and then Corviknight got burned, so I just panicked and I just kept clicking Bruce because I was like, I don't know what to do. I can't beat him straight out. Like if I attack, I'm going to lose. So I just roosted and roosted and roosted. And it wasn't until the, the final minutes when I really like actually stalled. Like I didn't pick a move for a, a decent amount of time. Like I, I had to, there was no way. There was one scenario where I maybe could have killed a Cinderace um, and that would have been, uh, what was it? Cinderace. Uh, uh, we, we bulk up, bulked up, I believe, instead of drill packing with Corviknight. And if we had gotten a drill pack, a drill pack, bleh, a drill pack, it's because Timmy's not here. He normally keeps me calm. Uh, <laughs> uh, because drill pack, uh, would have done a decent amount of damage with the bulk ups and stuff. So, and then eventually I, I got to protect high jump kick on the Cinderace and it missed and it landed in red. So if I got an extra damage off, I don't know if Derek knows or knew, I guess now he knows, uh, that high jump kick misses with the protect. Um, it would have killed the Cinderace and that would have won outright. Um, so it, it was it, it, a couple of misplays, I think, on both parts. Um, I think he maybe, he, he definitely told me he did not expect Quarvernite with that set, which I was like, 
you probably should have looked at my last match last week. Um, I didn't use it with Corviknight. I used it with Leafeon, but Corviknight had the move set. So um, I guess maybe this came down to preparation a little bit. Um, I don't think Derek's game plan was necessarily bad. Him starting off with Dialga was rough. That was, I think I said in the video too, I was like, do not start off with Dialga, please. And he started off with it. That made things pretty complicated um, to try and work around it. He did do well with the ice beam. I was also very surprised when that came, came out of nowhere. Um, it's also me, I guess, not prepping properly too. Uh, but he did Dragon Pulse first turn expecting Dracovish, which was a good uh, a good uh, attempt at a prediction there. Um, but I was willing, I, I think I'm getting a little bit better at, pre at, not predicting, but like learning sacrifice plays and working around them and doing things like that. Because uh, letting Hippodon go down early really didn't make a whole heck of a difference uh, in the match. I don't know how much of a difference it really would have made, to be honest, in the long run. But uh, GG's Derek, sorry to frustrate you. I kept telling him afterwards, I was like, I'm so sorry. Um, but he played well, he came up with a good game plan. It's just, he wasn't expecting my game plan. So that played in my favor, definitely. Um, but GG is absolutely, this does, how, oh, how the mighty have fallen. We'll say this again in a couple matches, but oh, how the mighty have fallen. Uh, one of the only two undefeated teams from week three is now no longer undefeated. And the LA Inferno are sitting at two and two. Same differential, but you know, scenarios kind of play in their favor. Uh, so yeah, looks good for them. Um, the Iowa Incinera though, and the Everglade Entes is our next matchup. And this match got hit with some internet issues, unfortunately. Um, the only way the only cause for concern i guess that brought up for me was um the the um the timer so i, I did a little bit of looking i i kind of scrolled through tried to see um tried to see like how long each half was from the first half before they dis disconnected and then when they came back in i think they handled it well as in they you know they left the pokemon who already died off the team and they even like it was a lowland raichu's third dynamax turn so they stalled the first two and went to the third one and then pretty much picked up from there uh but two things a groudon being back to full health i don't know how much of a difference this would have made but groudon was like at probably 30 percent something like that health uh maybe less to be honest and then it you know when they restarted it was back to full health but then again i don't know if any landon's mons were weaker i don't really remember to be honest um so maybe they got back to full health too um so there's that but the first half was a around seven minutes and the second half was around 13 minutes uh so it's a question of would the timer have played into effect the answer is probably not but the fact that the time i added up to nearly 20 minutes i'm gonna give it the benefit of the doubt and say it was a little bit under um kind of says a lot would someone have stalled towards the end um to try and play out the timer would it have made a big difference in their mentality on how they're playing for like the final three minutes when it pops up and says three minutes left um i don't know I don't know it's tough to say that's like the only thing maybe we need to work out when it comes to internet issues is that unfortunately um but i mean the best you could do is like a set a timer go check the video and see okay it was this long let me set a timer to to you know you know there's 13 minutes left let me set a timer for 13 minutes three two one go you know i mean you just got to kind of trust each other on that one too not to cheat each other on that um and try to say oh there's not no time left now you, you you know you gotta trust each other but overall I think Foos came up with a good game plan and he did well to make sacrifice plays, speaking on those, and they paid off. They definitely paid off. I think the biggest play for me um, actually came from the Iowa Incineroar and made me believe for a second that they might turn it around, but I feel like the momentum was just too much on Everglades side, but it was when Vanillix got the freeze on Venusaur uh, and killed it. That was huge because Venusaur was kind of going on a rampage and Vanillix was the last Pokemon left. And that's also a double-edged sword. Vanillix was the last Pokemon left, so Blacephalon came in and just finished it. Um, but I thought maybe, you know, maybe there's some hope there. But we'll see in the next game, we'll see that there is a lot of hope with the last one. But with that one, that was like one of the biggest plays for me. But other than that, Blacephalon, your Mega MVP, um, your Mega Division MVP for week four, came in and did what it had to do. It just was one of those Pokemon that kind of just cleaned up shop. It took out uh, Alolan Raichu with a Shadow Ball, I believe it had. Uh, and then finished off Vanillax to finish the match 6-4 um, with whatever fire type move we had. I don't really remember. Uh, but this is one of three matches, the first of three matches that ended 6-4. The Evergreen Entes walked away with that one. Um, the next one here is probably the biggest, I, I mean, I'd say the biggest upset of the season, uh, mostly based off of record. Uh, the Wait, before we move on, hello, it's Editor Josh here. Um, 
yeah, I kind of forgot to mention one uh, pretty big play that happened uh, in the match. So Lightnin sends out Quagsire on uh, Foose's Colossal, which is a pretty smart decision. You know, Colossal's quad weak to water. Uh, but what Landon didn't consider was that the sun was up and Colossal could learn Solar Beam. And so Colossal used Solar Beam on Quagsire, one shot it because it is also quite effective, uh, and just absolutely obliterated it. And that was a huge turning point in the match uh, right away. That was an, a, a massive kill right off the rip um, because Foose was actually really worried about the Quagsire. So for him to get rid of it right away was amazing. Great bait because obviously, like I mentioned, Colossus is quad weak to fire, uh, quad weak to water. So it was going to get destroyed. Um, but instead, he destroyed the Quagsire. This is my favorite play of the week, but I somehow forgot to mention it. Um, but, you know, uh, uh, continue. Uh -huh. New Brunswick Nine Tails versus the Miami Dragonites. And New Brunswick Nine Tails walked away with a 6 4 win over the Miami Dragonites, over the reigning champs. And uh, it, was, it was pretty impressive. It was pretty impressive. We talked about it last week, Timmy and I. We talked about how recently Miami's been getting kind of knocked down a bit, getting pushed a bit at the beginning, but they're able to recover. And yes, that's impressive. But at the same time, it's, there's going to be a team that stops that. There's going to be a team where they, you, you stumble at the beginning and they're going to push you down and make sure you stay down, you know. And that's that's what New Brunswick did. That's what the Ninetales did. Um, initially, they started with both Zashin and Dust Noir. And then eventually, some switching happened and it, it came down to Snorlax versus Charizard. And this was frustrating, almost as frustrating as me constantly roosting on <laughs> Derek. I think the I think what made it worse though was an uh, air slash from Charizard brought it all the way down to red, and Snorlax just rested. So Snorlax was running the rest talk; it had rest and sleep talk, um, and Charizard brought it all the way down to red, and Snorlax just rested and, and basically eliminated everything. And so uh, Gwen Gwenaco was able was forced to basically let Charizard go because there was no point switching trying to keep it alive. Um, but then, uh, was it, uh, Lycanroc came in to replace the Charizard. Close combat in the Snorlax, didn't kill it, but it was able to excel rock before the Snorlax got off a, uh, another rest or anything like that. Um, and it was able to kill the Snorlax, but by that point, uh, momentum was definitely leaning more towards the Ninetales despite losing the wall. Um, Arcanine, I think followed up Snorlax, if I remember correctly, or no. I think it was no i'm sorry bronzong followed up the snorlax bronzong finished off lycanroc but it was also finished off by the whimsicott it took a lot of damage from a crunch from lycanroc and it got its defense lowered um but then whimsicott came in and finished that and then this was the big turning point this was the when the game broke open for the nine tails arcanine came in uh arcanine dynamaxed immediately and max flared whimsicott killed it picked up its first kill um and then ferramosa came in now this is also another talking point. Despite the slow starts, this was a pretty decent misplay. Um, but this is also at a point where I'd have to watch the match back and see what else Wenako could have done to try and turn this around because Wenako were forgot that there was a reflect up. Bronzong, right before it died, got off a reflect, which is massive. Turned out to be massive. So he so Wenako brings in Fermosa. Fermosa tries, I can't remember if it's Max Quake or Max Rockfall. It tries one of those on the Arcanine and obviously with the Reflect. I didn't even know, but with how little damage it took without the Reflect, it might have still survived, but it might have gone down a little bit sooner. But uh, Arcanine completely destroys Fermosa because it takes the hit. Um, so then Gwenako brings in Zashin, and then Zashin tries Sword Sensing first turn, but it took a nice hit. Uh, or no, what did it did swords down first turn but eventually point is is it ended up in red and like no 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 actually yeah it did take a big hit and it ended up in red so all jack had to do was click extreme speed and zashi was dead um and this is where i kind of disagree a little bit with some of our mvp rules because i feel like arcanine made a much bigger impact than blacephalon in my opinion um arcanine broke the game open for them and i know i believe what stone had said that there's a reason um if one pokemon has a death but the other one doesn't but they have the same you know kd the one without the death but I feel like Arcanine had a much bigger impact on this game. It broke the game open. It allowed um, Jack to get a lot of an advantage and essentially finished off a majority of his team uh, because all that was left after that was Rillaboom. Uh, but Arcanine was just a little too weak and Rillaboom was able to finish it off with an Earthquake. Um, and then Jack decided to bring in Dusk Noir 
tried tried to will wisp it Rillaboom got off a of swords dance first and jet tried to will wisp it and this is when i was like no way there's no way that he pulls this off with his last pokemon at the last second i was like there's no way because at this point when rillaboom came in on arcanine mind you miami was down one to four jack still had four pokemon whereas miami just had rillaboom like i said arcanine was was pretty weak but the rest of his pokemon were all full health um all miami had left was rillaboom jack had four pokemon when rillaboom came in uh, rillaboom like i said finished off arcanine it got off a sword dance in front of dust noir and obviously outsped it because of the grassy terrain and then it darkest lariated lit it did dust noir and killed it and picked up two kills there um and then jack at this point was like i'm done there's no way swords dance eq from rillaboom kills uh zekrom so zekrom comes in and zekrom gets outsped by rillaboom and and does get hit by the earthquake but it survives on about 60 HP, and Zekrom's able to return with a Dragon Claw and kill the Rillaboom before it can do anything. If Rillaboom survived, if Rillaboom survived, then we'd be looking at, a, at, a, at the biggest comeback in EBL, I feel like, um, because that's insane. Facing a 4-1 deficit, and you just turn it around immediately with one Pokemon, that's crazy. Um, because if Zekrom goes down, Jogology's not taking a plus two Earthquake from Rillaboom, and it's getting outsped, guaranteed. So. Yeah, that was very close towards the end, but Zekrom was able to take the hit and finish off Rillaboom. And the Brunswick Ninetales, winless, no longer. And oh, how the mighty have fallen. <laughs> As Miami lose uh, their undefeated record, New Brunswick picks up their first win. And that's huge for playoff implications uh, for the New Brunswick Ninetales, at least. For Miami, I believe despite their loss, they're still, they still wrapped up first place because everyone below them uh, does not have the... Um, the the um the one above below them head to head that's what i'm trying to say they don't have the head to head so that was a big win um for new brunswick but i win that i mean a loss that didn't really ultimately affect miami but great job jack great game plan and uh miami i'm sure they're bats back i'm sure they'll bounce back it's they're the reigning champs um next up we have the detroit luxuries versus the san diego sylveons again uh another team by the way that picked up their first win in the detroit luxury they won in a 6-4 fashion um but again i gotta say the san diego sylveons put in a pretty good shift um uh, one huge play went against them uh one massive play draco so i'm just gonna skip ahead towards the end because it's already at this point i believe it's two two like they're they have they both have two pokemon left if i remember correctly toxpex and blaziken for detroit Dracozol and Serena for San Diego. Dracozol, so so Max first of all misclicks and clicks recover when he's sitting in red um, instead of protecting. Whereas uh, Tara and the coach of the San Diego Sylveons picks Bolt Beak obviously to try and kill a Toxpex. It outspeeds of course, but it misses. It missed and Max got off so lucky right there it missed he's able to recover and then he just baneful bunkers and lets the drake result die to poison that was rough to watch that sucked great great for the chart luxuries but it sucks because if drake result lives that and it kills toxapex it more well if it more it's gonna kill toxpex because it was in red um and now let's talk this Blaziken, and maybe Draco's ult doesn't kill Blaziken, but it can definitely get off a very hard hit. Um, but more than likely, I would expect Bolt Beak to kill in that situation against Blaziken. So that was huge, huge, and probably won the match for the Luxrays because, again, I feel like Draco's ult maybe kills Blaziken before it dies to poison. So that was huge. That was massive. Um... So Toxpex lives, it stalls out the poison on Draco's ult, and then kills Serena. I saw Tara say that she got critted, which she did. She got critted three times in a row. But Toxapex has an ability called Merciless, which crits poison targets guaranteed every single time, um, which is insanely good. That's really good. Like, I didn't even know that ability existed. That's really good. Um, so that was huge. Um, you didn't really get unlucky with the crits, Tara. That's just Toxapex's ability. Um, and with Baneful Bunker, Bunker, you're pretty much guaranteed to always get poison unless you only have special moves. Um, so, great job to Toxpex. It, it clutched up at the end there for the Detroit Luxuries, and they walked away with their first win uh, narrowly. And with a little bit of luck, with a little bit of luck, but again, I, I really don't think San Diego played bad because, again, a little bit of luck went against them. Um, 
that if that miss doesn't happen they might we i, I might be talking about them winning um, not losing but unfortunately it didn't go their way and uh it was funny because max was a little uncharacteristically frustrated in this match i've never really heard him kind of frustrated like that um at least audio wise his face cam wasn't in the video um but i was, I was a little surprised by that same as like when when guanaco was like cheering earlier in the season or getting mad like audibly angry uh or frustrated um i was very surprised because like the whole first season we never really saw that kind of stuff out of them um even when max was zero and three which by the way this feels like a repeat of season one although this this time it's a little more complicated because you know the team's missing out on playoffs uh but last season max went zero and three to start the season and then won his last two matches this season oh and three to start the season he won one of his last two one of his last two against better opponents as well like at least record wise um so very curious to see how he does but moving on to the final match of this week um probably the one that's gonna have the quickest conversation here the atlanta braviary pulled off the very first sweep of the elite battle league it's history completely a 6-0 sweep over the philadelphia flygons um not much to talk about i mean there's this okay there's a couple talking points here um a matt was talking about sweeps all week so i thought maybe something bad happened um either he got swept or, or wolf got swept i was worried because he was talking about it all week he was talking about it so much that i know he was dying to say it um so <laughs> or at least i don't i don't know he just I, I don't know if it was just coincidence that he just so happened to be talking about sweeps and stuff um i probably it might have been who knows um but i thought that was really funny but on the philadelphia side so atlanta's atlanta's game plan with obviously went off without a hitch cartana picked up six kills it started off got off a swords dance and then just wrecked house one shot everything so there's really not much to talk about on the atlanta side it's more so on the philadelphia side um i have a couple questions maybe you can clear it up for us wolf so a no darmanitan which I was very surprised by, or at least no fire type move or anything, and also no Magna Zone. So in my opinion, even if you're not expecting their Ultra Beast, you should still have something for it. And there was really not much for it. Um, then again, if Rhyperior or Dynamax is, it takes a Leaf Blade, which it never really was going to because it's quite effective, and the Cartana is plus three, there's no chance of taking that. But regardless, if it somehow managed to take the Leaf Blade and return with a, with a ground type move, Cartana probably more than likely would have died um because it is a glass cannon but uh yeah no right here died right away uh but i was very surprised to not see magazone or more so darmanitan as well because it was it, it's quite effective against cartana so i was expecting it or at least fire type moves in general none of that um but also i didn't really see the point of toxic spikes as well i was i was honestly like i, I really wasn't expecting toxic spikes I really wasn't and i didn't really see the point because i mean if you look at um stone's team half of them don't even get hit don't even get can't can't get poisoned so toxic spikes maybe weren't the best idea at least to start off with maybe you could have switched straight into someone else to to try and get a hit off on cartana um but ultimately i don't know maybe you can explain in the, in the comments wolf your thought process with the setup and stuff um i know matt's thought process um <laughs> uh but yeah that was a rough one to watch congratulations to atlanta for the first sweep but it sucks to be in philadelphia shoes but you definitely that's that's just the kind of kind of loss you just kind of got to sweep off you know what i mean it's, it's one of those freak losses where maybe you just weren't fully prepared so you just kind of got to brush it off and move on um but ggs to both of you guys nice try wolf nice try <laughs> um now moving on we have we are heading into the rankings here and the playoff implications um so we're gonna go over the mega division first we have week four rankings the kentucky kinglers with a three and one record in first uh, uh with a plus five differential in second we have the Evergate Entes two and two negative one differential in third we have the iowa and Cinnabar two and two negative one differential and the la inferno in uh with a two and two record uh minus six uh in fourth place and in fifth place new brunswick nine tails at one and three with a negative one differential if you're wondering why the entes and the incineroar despite having the same record and differential why the entes are heading the incineroar the entes beat the incineroar uh this last week so they get the head-to-head -head over them uh now this we the playoff implications essentially revolve completely around the new brunswick nine tails so 
if the New Brunswick Nine Tails lose, the dramatic finish is not happening. Everyone's in the playoffs, and it's just fighting over. Um, I believe if if the Evergrantes win, Derek would be guaranteed to be in first, regardless of how his match goes. Uh, the the Kentucky Kingers, the Evergrantes are, are guaranteed to be in second because both the LA Inferno and the Iowa Incinero were lost to the to the Evergrantes, um, which means that the uh iowa and la will be playing for third or fourth so they'll be playing for who they play in the playoffs if jack loses um and that's just kind of the non-dramatic kind of boring scenario the more interesting scenario is if jack wins uh in the playoffs well he, i think i i don't know if he's guaranteed to be in the playoffs um but there's a very 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 good chance of him being in the playoffs um and the winner of the iowa la game uh is in but if it's me, if I lose and Jack wins, I'm out because uh, the Nine Tails will have will have the same record. Um, I'll have the same record as the Entes uh, and the Nine Tails, but the, they. Oh wait, how does that? Wait, never mind. Both. I know I beat Jack. Wait a minute, how does that work? Oh, my bad. No, 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 no. My my bad. Um, if there's a tie, if there's a tie of records, as in. Um, let's say it's me, the Entes, and the Ninetales. Um, I beat the Ninetales, the Ninetales beat the Entes, the Entes beat me. It comes down to differential, which means I'm not in a good scenario either in that one. Um, so fingers crossed, Jack loses. <laughs> um, so there's a chance for the Ninetales. The, the Ninetales need to win. They need a couple things to go their way for them to get into the playoffs. Point is, um, but if they lose, then again, it's just not, it's just kind of a boring scenario. Everyone's in the playoffs. Um, and it's kind of the same over in the Dynamax division. Good transition, Josh. Thanks, Belly. Um, <laughs> the Miami Dragonites are in first, and I believe they have wrapped up first place. Everyone below them, they beat in their division. And even if they beat the Philadelphia Fly, I mean, they lose to the Philadelphia Flygons, the Flygons can't hop above the Dragonites um, due to, well, it depends. It depends on some of the other games go, but more than likely, I believe the Dragonites have wrapped up first place, much like the Kentucky Kinglers as well. The Kinglers likely have wrapped up first place as well. Um, so the Miami Dragonites, I don't think it's guaranteed actually. It might be, but um, it's pretty much, pretty much set in stone. Um, now, this division revolves a little bit more around the Luxray slash the Sylveons as well. So in this division as well, if the Luxrays lose, um, that's it. Everyone's safe. The luxuries are out. Everyone else in the division is safe. And again, they'll just be playing for placement. I'm not really going to get into that because that's just kind of... Um, so, different scenarios. If the Luxrays win and the Sylveons lose and the Philadelphia Flygons lose, there's a three-way tie. And that comes down to differential, like I just mentioned with the other division. However, the Luxrays are minus nine, so... Uh, they need a really big wins from both our uh, big losses from both the Flygons and the Sylveons and they need to win by uh, They need to win 6-1 or a sweep to have a good chance at that So that scenario does not benefit them very well at all actually um, because they have a poor differential so um, Unless miraculously the Sylveons and the Flygons get swept uh, and That would suck for the Flygons because that'd be two in a row But miraculously if they get swept and the Luxrays win by a decent scoreline then the lectures will be good to go. Uh, they can potentially get in there. Um, now, another scenario if the Luxrays win. If the Luxrays win, and this is the best scenario for the Luxrays to get into the playoffs, is if they win, the Sylveons lose, and Philadelphia wins. That's the best scenario for them. Um, that means the Luxrays are in and the Sylveons are out. I believe that's how it would work. So that is really the only scenario for them that works out the best. That's the best case that's the most likely scenario i guess uh because the other ones they rely too much on differential too much on scoreline which is too like interchanging it's too they, you're you want to rely more on win or loss not if they win 6-1 lose 6-1 whatever it may be so that's best best case scenario for the luxuries um and the sylveons will drop out um so yeah that's uh, divisions th the divisions are pretty similar especially when it comes to records because they both have three one teams they both have three two and two teams and they both have um one and three teams so exact same records in both divisions so we'll see if that shapes up uh later on um after week five speaking of which good segues today josh you're doing good without timmy um i'm over it let's head into <laughs> let's head into week 
five. First up, we have the LA Inferno versus the Iowa Incineroar. I'm just gonna get it right out. I'm gonna back myself on that one. Um, but as a neutral, I think this match is honestly gonna be close. I think a lot of it's gonna come down to Landon's game plan and how he uh, reacts and changes. Um, I do think I would not be surprised if Iowa walked away with a win. I'll tell you guys that. Landon's been playing great this season, so I would not be surprised if they walk away with the win. Um, and again, this matchup, if Jack loses, really only decides who's in third, who's in fourth, um, and who has basically who has to go against Derek, who has to go against Foost. That's pretty much what the scenario is. I don't know who Landon prefers. I don't even know who I prefer because I lost to one of them and I had to stall out the other one. So technically, I stalled out both of them, <laughs> but I did lose to one of them. So. Um, I don't even know who I would prefer, but I don't know who Lana would prefer either. It depends. I mean, if you you're kind of, if you're like, eh, I'm kind of okay. I'm, I'm, I'm. It's not. It's tough either way. I personally don't really care. It's gonna be tough with with whichever matchup I have to go against. So. Even if I lose to Landon, I have to face Derek. Oh no, again. <laughs> you know, it's like either way, I'm just gonna be like, oh no. So, um, I guess we're just gonna be playing for pride if Jack loses. So, uh, I'm gonna back myself, but again, I would not be surprised if Landon beat me. Um. Moving on, we have the New Brunswick. Oh, yeah, Timmy's not here to make fun of me, so it's okay. Uh, do we have the New Brunswick Night Tales versus the Everglade Entes? Uh, now, this is a monumental one. This is one of the deciders for the Mega Division, or the decider for the Mega Division, really, whether it's going to be a dramatic finish or whether it's just going to be a simple finish. Um, the New Brunswick Night Tales coming off a very good win over the Miami Dragonites, but so are the Entes. The Entes came up with a big win over the Iowa Center, where both teams got to be feeling good. Um, the New Brunswick Night Tales got their first win. And they knocked off the Miami Dragonites from their undefeated record. So they got to be feeling a little bit better than the Entes. But I'm going to trust Foos a bit more to be consistent. Um, if I if, if I had to guess who was going to get a second win in a row, I'd probably side with the Entes on that one. Um, it's... Uh, yeah, I, I think I'd side with the Entes, but I would not be surprised if the Ninetales came up with an upset. I mean, obviously they came up with a big upset over Miami, so I would not be surprised if the, if, if the, the Ninetales came up with something big. Um, but I'm gonna I'm gonna side with Foos. I feel like Foos is a good battler, and uh, he I feel like he he comes up with something to try and counter Jack. Uh, and moving on, we have the Kentucky Kinglers versus Detroit Luxrays. Um, first place in the Mega Division versus last place of the oh dynamax division that's the first that's the second time in a row we've seen that because it was first place in the dynamax with miami going against last place in mega with new brunswick interesting uh, anyways the kentucky kinglers obviously are going to be the favorites in this one so i want to back them because their team just looks infinitely better um okay not infinitely but we we are going to see ninjask i feel like that might be the one advantage the flygons have uh is is they have to face ninjask and i i still don't know what Derek's gonna do with ninjask i feel like that might be one of his regrets uh when we ask him what was your regrets with your draft i feel like ninjask might be up there um so that that'll be interesting to see but uh i'm gonna back the kinglers on that one i just feel like they're strong right now uh, we keep bringing up Cinderace, but Cinderace really has only truly shown up in like one match. Um, so it's tough, but I'm going to go with the Kinglers. I think the Luxurious will put up a very good fight. To, and, and, and I think the Luxurious will come up with a really good game plan. Although the Destiny is not fully in their hands when it comes to playoffs, the best they can do is win. So I'm sure Max is preparing. I'm sure he's getting ready. Um, so I'm very excited to see that matchup, but we're going to back the Kinglers on that one. Uh, next up, we have the Miami Dragonites versus the Flygons. And again, the Flygons are coming off of a really tough loss i mean that's got to be a hard pill to swallow um but at the same time it's one of those losses again you just kind of brush off you got to move on um you got to look towards your next match which is against first place in your division um a win for the fly ground secures playoffs for them guaranteed i don't know if there's even a scenario where they drop out to be honest unless it's differential there is a scenario there is a scenario i didn't bring up actually where uh the flygons lose the sylveons lose and the luxuries win um, they'll all have the same record, which means it'll come down to differential. Um, oh, did I, wait, no, did I, I think I did. No, 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 I did say that. I did say that. No, no, no. I'm sorry. I did say that. I'm, I'm dumb. I did say that. Um, so the Flygons, there's a, there's a small, small chance they can follow the playoffs if they lose. It's not the worst. They just can't lose by a lot. If they don't lose by a lot, they should be fine. They, they, that pretty much means that they're in because it'll the only way that I believe Detroit can hop Philadelphia is, is by differential if it comes down to a three-way tie. So 
the goal is if you're gonna lose don't lose by six don't get swept again six three six four um but i'm gonna back mammy we've been back backing mammy this whole season and even though they stumbled um i feel like they still have a a tough uh a, a not sorry they still have a good a great team they still have a great team and uh guanaco is a great battler so i'm gonna back the dragonettes in this one uh i want to see the flygons pull off the upset so I'm, I'm counting on you wolf to prove me wrong please i want to see this upset again that'll be two weeks in a row where the dragonettes get upset um but then again philadelphia they've already proven that they're a team you can't really count out so i wouldn't be surprised if wolf walked away with this one but uh yeah we're gonna pick the dragonettes with that one uh the atlanta Braviary versus the san diego sylviads is the final matchup husband versus wife um and i feel like the Braviary very have to be feeling good right i mean a six so sweep you have to be feeling good um it's gonna be a ma i mean i mean does stone try it again that's the question right does stone just just say screw it we're gonna roll with it again lead off with cartana and get off with swords down see what happens and if so how does tara react to that you know how do, how do they counter each other um it's tough because stone has had has a UB that has performed a lot better this season than Buzzwool, because under both coaches, whether it be the Meowths or the Sylveons, neither of them could really get Buzzwool going, because uh, Buzzwool will, might get a kill, but then it just gets destroyed in the next turn. So it's tough, but I'm going to back the Braviary on that one. Um, if the Braviary win, the Sylveons will be in a tough spot in the playoffs. There's a chance they can drop out. Um, so that is really tough. But uh, I, I, I'm back in the Brave area. I mean, they, they just have to be feeling confident right after that 6 0 sweep. So I'm going to back the Brave area on that one. Uh, and yeah, a lot to play for in week five, and I'm super pumped to get into it. Um, but that's going to be it for this, this one, guys. Uh, like I said, you need to go check out the coaches in the description because week five is shaping up to be the best week this season. So you guys absolutely want to go check out the coaches down below. Saturdays are when the matches go up. So keep an eye out on Saturday. Um, they go out different times. So you want to keep an eye out. Uh, make sure you subscribe to everyone if you want to keep up with all the matches and all that good stuff um and yeah check out all the coaches down below check out timmy b i know he's he's not here right now but he's here in spirit and in the description so go check out his channel and all the socials and all that good stuff uh, i've been lonely hermit this is my channel so it'd be nice if you guys can subscribe and leave a like on the video and also the rest of my socials are in the description as well and uh, say bye belly in the comments down below uh she might she she's going to make a return later in the season i'll, I'll let timmy announce that stuff but um yeah, that's going to be it. Hope you all have a fantastic day, and I'll see you next week with our Week 5 Roundup. Bye!